Tokyo Drift was the best movie ever made. Probably should add a bit of a trim for this video still. Here it is, my dream car, or I should say one of my dream cars. This is the Nissan 370Z, but it's not a normal Nissan. It's a Nissan 370Z Nismo edition. This is the type of car I've always wanted to own ever since I was younger and first ever watched Tokyo Drift. It's taken me exactly one year to find this car in the UK. One whole year of searching till I could find one which I was able to afford. And it's a decision that made zero financial sense and I'm not gonna recover from. But honestly, there's just something about this car that just makes you smile every time you drive it. So with that being said, let's cue the amateur montage. I feel like all nine in the summertime. Force running through my mind. Beautiful black woman gone, but she's the one of mine. False hope and delusion of you still checking in. I guess that's how you're gonna act when your heart's on the line. It's been a mild summer, an even colder winter. More money, more problems, I swear it's getting bigger. Goosebumps, the way you shiver, snakes are gonna sliver. Fill up a cup of emotion and drown it to the liver. Now this car is a head turner and that was noticed on day one of picking it up. I went to the petrol station just to fill up and some random person approached me asking me if this was a Porsche. On top of that, my own granddad thought this was a Ferrari when I showed him a picture of it. Now, as I've said several times, this car gets looks, but it's not all sunshine and rainbows. There are definitely some drawbacks of owning this car. Point number one, these tires are bloody expensive to change. They're gonna cost me 250 pounds per tire to change. For comparison, the last car only cost me 80 pounds per tire. Issue number two is the range of the car so I put in 40 pound of petrol which gave me half a tank and only 130 miles of range. Now that just might be my driving style or it could be the car but that is an expensive fill up for just 130 miles of range in which issue number three also stems on the petrol point so this car only takes 98 run so the premium unleaded petrol which is also very expensive that you have to keep using the premium stuff. Number four is the storage. This car has has virtually no storage so if we do look at the storage you have in the car so you have this cup holder here which is quite small my gym cup didn't even fit in it and then you have this compartment here which i have what earphones a wallet some painkillers and that's it it's full it can't store anything else now nissan did try to combat that by having these spaces in the back i'll try to show the drivers more so you do have these storage spaces in the back but they're just too hard to use, you know, when you're driving, you gotta like break your arm to try reach it. And it is the same with the boot situation. So if we just open up the boot, that is the boot space here. Now it might look pretty big on camera actually, but the depth, there's no depth there. It's pretty small. I went to Donnell and put six pillows in this boot and the boot was full. And the worst part is you think there might be a spare tire under here, but if you open it, there's actually no spare tire. Um, there's actually nothing under there nothing useful if I'm honest. Number five is how rigid and heavy the steering wheel is when you're trying to drive this car. Now I usually drive with just one hand so one hand on the steering wheel one hand on the gearbox constantly and no kidding my right hand was starting to hurt from trying to turn the wheel just using the one. And number six everything on the interior is just kind of dated and it sort of needs to be ripped out and replaced with something modern. As you can see you've still got the old school buttons here you've got your CD player which I think you can also put a DVD in there and watch a movie on the screen but this is just all dated it doesn't need to be there and on top of that the options you have on the steering wheel they're pretty plain they're pretty bland there's not much there's not much you can control from the steering wheel itself so those are the bad points i've noticed in the past week of owning this car and if i'm honest they're not too major they're quite minor and they all melt away as soon as you turn on the car hear it roar and you see people's heads turn as you're driving down the street just look at this car look how it looks how can you not look back at this car when you walk into a shop and think damn i own this car just look at it there's literally nothing like this it just looks amazing in every single angle i sound like too much of a fanboy but i just can't help looking back at this car financially one of the worst decisions i've ever made morally one of the best decisions i hope you enjoyed this video and we'll do a follow-up review in a year's time